time for counting out number two story tonight's worst person in the world. The bronze to Brit Hume of Fox Noise, now in the rewriting history department over there. Everybody agrees, I think, on both sides of the spectrum now that the New Deal failed. The debate is over why it failed. Uh, sure. Everybody. Except the most recent Nobel Prize laureate in economics, Paul Krugman, who just wrote that the New Deal's long-term achievements remain the bedrock of our nation's economic stability, and except for probably a majority of economists, economic professors. But Brit Hume agrees with Brit Hume. That'll show that damn Roosevelt. Runner-up Michelle Malkin claiming the people conducting the recount in Minnesota were providing, quote, moral support and help to Senator-elect Al Franken, and that some of the recounters were involved with ACORN, that some might have had conflicts of interest, that there were shenanigans because Republicans were completely left out in the cold when it came to the canvassing board. According to the St. Paul Pioneer Press, the Minnesota State Canvassing Board, which conducted that recount, consists of five people. The state's chief justice, a Republican appointed by the Republican governor, who used to be his law partner. One of the state Supreme Court's associate justices, who used to be the state Republican Party lawyer and was appointed by the Republican governor. One of the state's assistant chief judges, who was appointed by the former governor, Jesse Ventura, who was an independent. One of the state's chief judges, who was elected in a nonpartisan race, no political parties listed, and to this day refuses to say if she's aligned with any party. And Minnesota Secretary of State Mark Ritchie, the Democrat. The Republican governor of Minnesota called this canvassing board, quote, fair. And the chief attorney for loser Norm Coleman in November said, the people of this state should feel good about who's on this panel. But Michelle Malkin wants to create the impression that the board of two Republicans, a Democrat and two independents, was politically crooked. Why? Because it didn't fix the outcome the way she liked it, and because she thinks her readers are even dumber than she is. But in the winner's circle for the first time this year, it's Bill the Clown, who has apparently decided to devote the show this year to scaring children, the gullible, and those blighted souls who watch his comedy program into believing that a terror attack is imminent. It began last night with a graphic a banner reading, Security Alert! while video rolled of the 9-11 attacks. This after Orly had claimed incorrectly again that limiting interrogation of prisoners to what is in the Army Field Manual would mean no interrogation because the Army Field Manual says, quote, you are not to make any captured person uncomfortable in any way. The Field Manual says no such thing, nor do the, the, uh, the Geneva Conventions, which are quoted in the Field Manual. Billy also said, I don't want the New York Times or NBC News calling ideological shots when terror killers want to murder us. Guess what? Neither does anybody else. Though clearly, neither NBC News or the New York Times, either one of them could have done worse at protecting us than the Bush administration did in 2001. Billo, there's ratings in scaring people, the clown. Today's worst person in the world.